Seely, you're celebrating your 70th birthday this Wednesday. You look amazing, first of oh, all, and a you. big happy birthday <laughs> from the Limerick Leader and all our readers. Thank you so much. Thank How you. How are you feeling? Well, I'm, I can't believe, to be honest with you, I'm 70 and I got this far, or I reached 70. Um, but a bit proud as well that I'm still out there. I'm still working. Um, you know, and life has been good. Uh, it has been difficult, it has been fantastic, and it has been difficult again. And now it's fantastic at this stage of my life. You know, I think you go through all stages and you go through all decades. You know, uh, this is a very good decade for me for lots of reasons, really. Um, I'm settled, you know, I have my home, I have my husband, and I'm lucky. Thank you, God, for that. And I have five fantastic grandchildren. So I'm... Uh, to answer you about being 70, I feel very proud to have reached where I am now. A bit worried about getting older. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere uh, too soon, you know, and it is 70, like it is a milestone and it is, you know, people might say uh, that, you know, that lady passed, she was a good age. Jesus, don't tell me 70 is a good age. I don't want to hear that. I just want to keep going, you know, and I hope I can. Do you feel 70? You don't not, look a day no, of it. my darling, not in a thousand years. And um, I'm going to answer you that, not in a thousand years. And then I'm going to, you know, you may say to me, what is it? If the, my biggest answer would be to you is hard work, working the brain. The brain is everything, you know, I think. And you keep your mind active and you keep your body active and you keep yourself active. And you don't let stuff into your life. You know, of course I've been upset, of course I've been depressed, of course I've been you really upset about different things and things haven't happened and, you know, wish things did happen and they didn't happen. But I'm strong enough to keep it out and move on. And I think that has been a great, um, a great lesson for me, uh, for, for my mind really, because people around me that I have loved and that have passed, um, you know, my Auntie Teresa now, she was phenomenal. Her mind was a sharp, she was reading, she was 94. She was amazing and well known in Limerick City. Everybody knew her. Whereas my mother gave up, you know, and she wasn't, you know, and I, when she gave up, like she got, you know, she got tired. She wasn't interested. You know, she didn't want to go places and you could feel she was just waiting for something. And mm. that is why I'm saying to anybody or everybody out there, keep going. Don't be listening to people telling you to slow down. You'll know when it's time to slow down. And I will know, and I know I will know. Now, the lockdown has been very difficult for an awful lot of industries, yes. including the fashion industry. How have you coped? You've obviously found it difficult, but you've got through it. Yeah, it was very, very difficult. But again, Anya, it, it, it's, I have two stories here. First story, um, it was extremely difficult because it started when we were, you know, we tick in then to the Rose, we tick into the massive show in Mallow, we tick into Riverfest, we tick into um, the National Ploughing, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, lots of TV work. And that was shut down completely because I couldn't travel, because I wasn't allowed to travel. The cocooning, if I ever hear that word again, I, I shall scream, cocoon me. You know, I mean, God, I have more energy, and I was, and I couldn't travel. And the work was there in television, but, you know, we weren't allowed. That was very difficult because I was looking at my days going into evenings and etc. But I pulled myself together, as I do, and I stuck off and started doing deportment online mm -hmm. just because I had nothing else to do, and that went on a treat. And then I explored the, the, the actual power which... I should have known, been in the industry. But Cecile and Asta were way into social media before I really went into the Instagrams and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I realised there was another world out there and there was another, so I got into that. But having said that, that's that story. But the other story, the back story, is we were financially went over a cliff, okay? Because everything we had was wiped out. Am I grateful to God? I am that we're in this stage of our lives, Ger and I, that uh, we're at the stage where at this stage we need to have our own home, which we have, and our own car. So we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Thank God, Cecilia, Cecile and, um, and Asta, um, their husbands, my son and Richard, their jobs were safe and we were 
delighted. Mm -hmm. But it was touch and go, I know, with so many people. And my heart went out to them. I had a call from a good friend of mine. She said, we're pushing the payments of the car out now. We've pushed the repayments on the um, on the mortgage. Uh, we're not going to use only one car. You know, I was there listening to this and going, Jesus, because both herself and her husband were affected. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in, like, say you are, you're a job and you're the manager of five bars in Limerick, that's a great job, great money. Mm -hmm. And she's a hairdresser. They were gone. And there's lots of people that I know in that mm -hmm. industry because we travel and we move in the hair, the makeup, you know, the, the restaurants, the clubs, because we would work within them. Mm -hmm. And that was happening. So there again, it has been really difficult. And anyone that says to me, that we were great, we, I, geez, I can't listen to it. No, it has been. And even if it wasn't so bad mm -hmm. for us financially, because only that we're settled, but the loss of earnings was, was unbelievable. We were okay. We didn't have to go ringing banks. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for that, you know, for that side of it. So that's, I hope I answered my questions in two ways for you. Mm -hmm. There was that side and, and the financial side and everything. But it's creeping back, as they say, the Calvary are coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to be all back, I hope. <laughs> Someone is coming. And Philly, did your mental health take a toll, do you think? No, never. Anya, I've been through too much now in my life. Mm -hmm. I never let it in. Mm -hmm. I get down. But that doesn't say I am hugely respectful of all us women and mm -hmm. even men that have gone there mm -hmm. because of it. I'm a lot older. You're talking to a woman of 70 mm -hmm. years of age. So we have seen the decades and we're able to work. You know, we had two bloody... Um, Recession. Recessions in the name of God, you know, mm -hmm. the first one nearly killed us. Second mm -hmm. one, we flew it through it. So you have all that behind mm -hmm. you and experience. But I've seen it with a lot of my friends who are much younger than me. <laughs> I'm actually the same age as them. <laughs> you know, they're younger than me. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen them at big jobs and then they go on the 350 a week and they have mortgages. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen it. It has been disaster. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it didn't. And they were some of them, people I've spoken to on the phone, the f you know, people that I know in different businesses around the country were really, really suffering. Mm -hmm. And I used to try to say to them, there is an end to this. I always, I love Luke O'Neill. I know yes. our other guy is fantastic. For, um, Tony Hulan. Tony Hulan is wonderful. But I like, me. I love his positivity. There was, there was so much going on. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he would always say, we're going to get out of this. We're yeah. going to get out of this. We're going mm -hmm. to get out of this. You know, if, and I always felt that was very good. You need those kind of mm -hmm. things, especially if you're not strong. Mm -hmm. And none of us were strong in this one. Mm -hmm. I could have dropped. And there were days when I didn't feel too good. There were days when I was whinging, but I never left myself go in there. Mm -hmm. I just kept back mm -hmm. and kept going. But that's only decades of bloody Experience. being there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could write a book on all that. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> and see, in relation to your birthday, how yeah. are you going to celebrate? It's obviously going to be oh, it's a big milestone sure. and it's exceptional times as well. Listen to me, I was, the Savoy was booked and we were all really? getting dresses and we were all dressing up and the whole town was going. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of a, a kind of a thank you as well mm -hmm. to all the shops. Like I'm working for Amy's, I work for her mother, you know, mm. like Greta Gib, all of them, I mean, all of them, we were all going to be there, the jewellers, the hairdressers, because that's my world, yes. you know, including yourselves, the media. And that was all going to happen. The survivors book for the 29th of November. Um, and now, sure, it's nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like there again, I thought if you'd said that to me before the lockdown, before we realised, I would have not listened. Oh, my God. But it's become the norm mm -hmm. for everybody. Weddings. You know, and I think of the young kids with their graduations, you know, and Dance. you know, imagine that age, mm -hmm. not able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm over it now, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be 70 for the year. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Keep the diary open, Tanya. When the doors open, I will be out. You can see the Christmas tree is open, the mantelpiece and all that is done. I put my foot out that front door and I will not come back in <laughs> I believe for the two it. weeks. I hope I see you in the White House, darling. <laughs> and or that, anywhere. How many grandchildren do you five. have? Five. And they're a huge part of your life. They're massive. They mm -hmm. have been, you know, um, during lockdown, of course, the first lockdown, it was a lot more. We were all terrified and we didn't know what we were doing. So I used to... Um, and got to learn again all about 
swipe, is zoom it swipe and, and zoom, and Jesus, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. So we were able to actually see them. And then the second lockdown towards the end of it there, because the schools were open and we could go to playgrounds, I was able to see them more. Mm -hmm. They're what, they're, you know, I've been asked this question now, being 70, you know, Ger and I are, you know, we're together all our lives and we're fine and the children are fine, but they are the greatest gift at mm -hmm. the end of the day. They mm -hmm. are phenomenal. For me, for anything, when things are right or wrong or good or bad, I look at them and nothing matters. Mm. And they're great fun. Yes. They're fantastic fun. So and they make you feel young, I presume. They do, well. of course. Yeah. Erica, granny, what are you wearing? <laughs> I'm a different for wearing heels around the house, you know? <laughs> really? I'm always in my bloody heels, even in my dress gown. Now, they might be lower heels, thick heels. <laughs> I hate bloody slippers, I always hated them. But I'd have a bit of a heel on me, you know, and I says, Granny, what are you doing to your slippers? Your granny was born with heels, darling. No, <laughs> what are you doing to your heels, sorry? And I'd say, your granny was born with heels, my love. She gets a great kick out of that. Oh. She gets a bit of a laugh out of me, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. even in cartoons and all those that they watch. They play a lot of the older songs, you know, the Motown and all that. And yes. I'm there, go, da, 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 da. <laughs> and she's go, Granny, how do you know all that? But I said they were there in my day, darling. Mm -hmm. Your granny was a, enjoyed herself at a good time. <laughs> I was born in, you know, we were around in the 60s. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they're great, my love, great. And Celia, how important do you think it is to support local businesses here, especially in Limerick, during the, the lockdown, the restrictions, whatever level it is? We in Limerick, I think, I have found maybe the earlier part of my life it was a little bit different, maybe things have changed. I mean, like you're talking to a 70 year old woman, but they are phenomenally supportive. I mean, you look at the rugby, the, the monster to, you know, follow them everywhere and love them. You know, there's a kind of a, a, a we support each other. Mm -hmm. But now more than ever, we have to. You can see there as you come into the house on you. I'm doing something for, you know, a shop online, click and collect. I think that click and collect is fantastic. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to support them. We need to support them. We need to walk around our beautiful city and go into the coffee shop, go into the men's shop, the lady shop, the hairdressers, the makeup artists, whoever's out there, mm -hmm. the shoe store, you know, anything, the barbers, coffee shops, anything. We need to support them. And so I, I, I'm getting the chance to say this now before this will be just out. So I would love to say that asking you all, please, please support local. And that is why, um, you remember, I started at 15 in this city. Would I be where I am now if I didn't have the support of every single one of them? No, mm -hmm. not the businesses. I would not. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much, Celia, thank for doing you. the interview. And happy birthday again. And thank and you so much. And have a great much. day. Yeah, I will. I will. Thank you, Anya, for coming. You're thank you very much. Thank you.